So when you modify a car this much, there's some different wiring that's involved. Wiring's not what I'm best at. So I invited my buddy Tim Murray over because he's done a lot of it and he's been helping. Tell us a little bit about what we've done and why. Well, because I asked you to, right? Yeah, that's right. But the first thing we did was um, Tim replaced the entire wiring harness with a Moss Artist, which is um, pretty cool because we were able to use the original Austin Healy Bug Eyed Sprite wiring diagram and the colors and the lengths and everything are all spot on. Now, I have to say that I've used a number of different uh, aftermarket harness systems and this Moss Harness by far um, is the most um, well put together, well measured, uh, well engineered uh, wiring harness I've used. It's uh, virtually identical to what you um, would have in the car when it came from the factory back in the 60s. And the wires terminate and are cut and fall into place exactly in the spots where you need them. So you're not extending things or having to trim wires. If the wires don't fall in that spot, you may have the harness routed incorrectly. So, uh, but it's a pretty much a no brainer. If uh, you're doing a car like this and you've got electrical problems, the only way to go would be to buy a Moss harness and use that harness in this application. You will save so much time doing that than if trying to do it yourself or get some non-specific harness that's not made for a bug eyed spray. We started with that harness and diagram and then um, we modified the diagram to take into account things like the alternator, wire in the f uh, fuel pump, and also the original Healy wiring diagram had, or wiring harness had two fuses in it. We decided to add four more fuses so that uh, some of the circuits like the lighting circuit and uh, the new fuel pump and stuff like that, they could be fused because that's a bit safer. The other thing is, is the alternator removes the voltage regulator because the voltage regulator is integrated into the new alternator. So we're able to use that voltage regulator box, gut it, and we put the fuse panel in it so that the car looks like it did, but actually the way the circuits are wired, those are all now fused. Well, the harness isn't expensive either. I think the harness was just over 400 bucks. I mean, how, how much time are you going to... Oh, yeah. Spend? You would 60-something-year-old crap. You drop you know. 40, 50 man-hours into yeah. cleaning up all the connections and rewiring the the, the segments that were broken. Uh, that's easily worth... The $400 easily pays for itself. So, as I said earlier, we switched over to an alternator. So, why, why bother? Uh, an alternator is better for a lot of reasons. A, it makes more electricity. The other thing with a supercharger and a 1275, this thing will rev to six, 7,000 RPM quite easily. Uh, the motor's been built to take that, but the generators don't, trust me, we raced with generators and we kept fragging them every single weekend. So the generator is not designed to run at a high RPM. Uh, yes, you can change pulleys and so forth, but uh, there's really, unless unless you're trying to keep something absolutely original, obviously this car is not original, um, there's no reason to keep a generator. You know, if, if generators were a good idea, we'd all still have them on our cars, and we don't. And they're also, um, they make their power um, based on the speed that the rotor is spinning in the generator. So you'll make more power uh, as the engine speeds up and as you slow down or when you're idling, the generator can maybe not keep up with the load that you have in the car. An alternator makes almost all of its power at very low RPM. So it's, and it's not gonna fluctuate as much as a generator would. I did not know that. Yeah, that's why you have a voltage regulator in your generators is to manage yep. that as the generator speeds up, you've got to relieve some of that power. And then, you know, as the generator um, slows down, you want it to switch back on. So okay. generators are a lot more RPM sensitive than alternators are. As we discussed, making one modification like the alternator, is not that big a deal. You change a couple wires in the harness, but it's the number of modifications we've made that kind of made this a little more complicated and required all new wiring diagrams. Yeah, you've got to think ahead a little bit when you do that. For instance, um, 
We are not using the mechanical tack drive that the original Keeley Bug Eye came with. So Tim purchased the electronic tack. We had to remember to run a wire into the dash harness so that we'd have the ability to be able to connect that electronic tack up. Um, you just have to kind of keep tabs of things like that. Speaking of the dash, you know, wiring under a dash is probably the most scary thing for people. Um, there's a lot going on back there. Um, this car, the dash is removable, uh, which makes it a heck of a lot easier. You can actually wire your dash out on a bench so you're not laying underneath it in the car. Yeah, and the harness is really nicely um, configured for that. There's separate harnesses for the front end of the car, the back end of the car, and then the dash has the main harness in it. So basically you can wire the entire dash up on a bench. Yeah. And then when you're ready, you bring the dash over, wire it through the firewall, and you know, pull the harness through the firewall, and you're pretty much done under the dash. So speaking of wiring on these British cars, they, they all seem to have this same system. Uh, this is the horn and they have these little bullet connectors everywhere. And this is a double uh, double connector. But the way all these wires go together, you basically press the bullets in. You can use pliers to get them in a little bit better. It's kind of an odd system, but all these British cars from the 60s use it. And it works pretty well. You don't usually get bad connections. I mean, the you know, everybody's got a version of that. The American cars the, uh, use the spade. You know, the male and female Spain connector type thing. Uh, Italian cars use those as well. Um, yeah, but this is more archaic. This is more archaic. Um, and in fact, an important thing to know is you're going to spend a lot of time polishing a lot of those connectors before you put them together. The ones that were in the lighting system and under the dash or with or you're, if you're reusing things on... Um, uh, from the engine compartment or something, you have to clean those connectors up to make sure that the connectors are. Uh, but Moss sells. I mean, you can buy a little bag of new ones for like five bucks, and we use those in. Yeah, this they're kind process. of a crimp on version, right? Uh, we added some solder to make mm -hmm. sure they stayed crimped on, right? But uh, yeah, you can get those and put them back on again, or if the device that you're using has them there and they're in pretty decent shape, you could take a wire brush and clean them up, and that'll be pretty good. So we'll have this car finished shortly. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, we've got updates on our website, classicmotorsports.com. Just look under the project cars. We do updates almost every week on it. And if you like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe to our channel and uh, help us grow. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And to see more stories like this, visit us online at ClassicMotorsports.com.